Hello again. So, hi, Carsten. Uh, what are hi. we going to do today? Hi, <laughs> Yeah, we did a lot so far. Our clusters mm. register, registered in the last video. We went to some settings and now it's time to create some volume, some CSVs, right? Right. We want to so put first, some storage or uh, we want to have some yes. storage, right? I think the purpose of this whole system mm. is to uh, run some VMs and for VMs, we need some high available storage. Mm. So okay. let's look at the drive part here uh, um, in mm -hmm. the cluster resources mm -hmm. and to recap we have audit by servers we have mm -hmm. six nvmes two four six in each server in total mm -hmm. 24 so uh, if we go to summary we mm -hmm. see here our 24 drives are healthy that's mm -hmm. always good and we see the capacity we can create out of these drives so mm -hmm. these drives say there are 1.6 terabyte drives but uh, i think we talked about that um, if you use them they have roughly 90 91 percent of the usage and uh, mm -hmm. bernard this is the terabyte Oh, so you call TB, it TB, TB byte, right? So TB the, hardware byte, vendor, right. the hardware vendor calculates terabytes. It, he does, you know, print it on the disk, but the operating system should uh, or shows it as TB bytes. However, the uh, it would, you know, we are missing an I here. I think it should yeah. have been, you know, if everything <laughs> would be correct, uh, it would be TIB. Um, yes, right. exactly. Yeah. So we have only one one point four six terabytes usable space uh, mm -hmm. that's the important thing right uh, so if we look here um, in total we would have uh, 64.9 terabyte plus some gigabytes these gigabytes are mm -hmm. our cluster um, cluster performance history volume so we have already one volume but it's very small mm -hmm. and then we have the rest is free we have a three color system that's not mm -hmm. um, i don't really get it so green is the used space mm -hmm. gray is the free space and then we have something that's like gray with uh, uh, darker gray in the dian no how you call it in germany it's schraffiert but how it's in english <laughs> I, don't I don't know i don't know but, but i think it's, it's for the for the people that are colorblind or have some uh color seeing disabilities i think um they might uh it's it's easier for them to pick that up My yeah, assumption. True. i don't know if it's no. true but um yeah. okay so, the so what's the, what's the yeah, what's that size for uh, yeah the, the question is first can we use it or ca can't we use it and what is it for mm. um if you look here and do an estimate, it's roughly a sixth of the whole space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is one sixth, two sixth, mm -hmm. three sixth, so it's half. It's a sixth. So um, it's it's like a hot spare in every server, mm -hmm. but it's not a hot spare. So, but you, if you know uh, a RAID controller and if you have your RAID system and you want to be prepared for a failure, the disk fails, there is another disk in your RAID that is not used for storage. It's just mm -hmm. there turning. And if a disk fails, the system can immediately rebuild um, all the data on the hot spare disk microsoft doesn't use the hot spare concept it's not allowed in storage spaces direct they use something called parallel rebuild so mm -hmm. we don't have a full spare disk we spare space on every disk we have so imagine we have our six disks and now we don't use a sixth of every disk so we have mm -hmm. one the, the capacity of one whole disk free but mm -hmm. not one free disk it's it's on on every disk we leave a part of the disk free. so now what happened one of the disks in the system fails and we can copy the data from another server into the free space that we left free on every disk so mm -hmm. if one disk fails that would be five sixths of data where we gone because also this disk has one sixth free so mm -hmm. five sixths um 
five parts of a whole disk uh, would have to be copied over and we have still five disks left with a six of free space. So the data that has to be rebuilt fits into these free space. And, and if you, yeah, Bernard, ask. Yeah, the uh, so, you know, just let me summarize that maybe in different words. So if you, you know, one server goes down from your cluster, you don't have a replacement hardware because mainboard is crashed and you need to wait for a very long time in order to get it back or to, you know, the system will rebalance itself, right? So it will try to come over the uh, the issue yeah. um, and uh, rebuild or rebalance the uh, the storage so that after some time, if that's if that job is done, using that space that is used as reserved as you just described. No. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. So imagine this is only if you have a failure in one server. So imagine mm. you have your you have your four servers, and in this server, one NVMe goes down. Okay. What you are describing is then we could oh. only use half of the space because uh, it has to rebalance. the The rebalance uh, extends has to go somewhere, and if a whole server yeah. fails, there's a lot of extends there. Right. Uh, we we usually don't. Uh, leave so many space unused. You okay. could do that with if if you only go here. If you have a two node cluster, you only go up to here. Then you could rebalance. But in this scenario, it's just in the server, so okay. you, it, it can compensate a failure of one drive. The repair processes can start immediately mm -hmm. and fill up the free space. With the extents, they were they were lost in the same server, but there there are copies of the same extents in other servers, and we come to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this is only with a server. If you go to an extent, you can also, um, of course, you can also uh, compensate a whole server, but for that you need more than Much three servers. Space. Okay. Yeah, or even yeah. more than four servers, because mm -hmm. imagine you have two servers with a two-way mirror. Uh, the extent that that is re generated has to be in another fault domain and if you lose yeah. one fault domain of two there is no fault domain to, re to rebuild the, the the data right so um this is exactly for the like a failure in the server you can compensate yeah? mm -hmm. you can use that space and uh, i have another cluster that i use for um for some production data and there are not enough space in there so i decided to also use this space Mm -hmm. The disadvantage is if uh, NVMe fails, I have to replace the NVMe and then the repair process can start. In mm -hmm. this example, if the, an NVMe fail, there's enough space in the same fault domain okay. to rebuild yeah. the data. Huh? Okay, so uh, I know I know that you know that, but you wanted to play uh, devil's advocate and uh, say it's not for a server failure. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a, a failure in one server, and we have this space in every server. So one NVMe that fails can be compensated in every server. Not a second, yeah. not a third. We can also leave more space unused. Then we can compensate maybe two failures. Yeah, but mm -hmm. this is for one drive. Okay. So it's a matter of just the size, how much you reserve, and then it's an economical. It, it's an economical. Exactly. Uh, yeah. If you have HDDs, well. for example, they are not mm. too expensive. You can uh, think about leaving two or three unused. So the size of them, they are used. The advantage here is they are used for I/O. If you have yeah. a hot spare, it's not used for I/O. It's it's just there waiting for a failure. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so but here everything is fine, and the green part is what we use. So if we now create volumes, and we want to do that in this video, and we talk a bit more about um, the resiliency. One, one, yeah. one, one question. Yeah. That size, that size that you had, is that netto capacity or is that gross capacity? Or oh, let's I, I, you know let's let's or let's maybe create the volumes and then let's see yeah. right. These are the extents that are available in the in the um, in the um, storage pool. And now we decide how we use them. Do we do a three-way mirror? Do we do a mirror accelerated parity? Go we to PowerShell and do a double parity? Do we do a two-way mirror? Yeah. So we decide how we use those extents. I think that was your question, right? So let's go here to volumes. 
you see, we have already one. And I love in admin center, I love these uh, these graphs and numbers. We come to that a bit later when we do performance tests. So we see here in, advent in inventory, we have already one volume, one uh, where our cluster performance history database lives. It's only 20 gigabytes and 6% are used. So this was a small green part we had. And now we want to create volumes. And um, we have a nice, wizard here um mm -hmm. it it offers us a name if we don't know how our name uh, volume should be named but we have something in mind what we want to do with this cluster called mm -hmm. vm fleet and vm fleet is very um very strict about the naming of the volume so we have to have one collect volume just a name then we can decide, in, depending on how many servers we have, uh, admin center, Windows Admin Center will offer us uh, different resiliency. So we have mm -hmm. four servers, and mm -hmm. it will offer us a three-way mirror. That's a mm -hmm. Microsoft preferred way, if mm -hmm. we have three servers or more, or a mirror accelerated parity. Nothing else. That we could also do a double parity, but Microsoft doesn't really like it slash mm -hmm. support it, uh, not at mm -hmm. least for virtual machines. Mm -hmm. And we could do a two-way mirror, but uh, mm -hmm. also risky with four servers, shouldn't mm -hmm. do it. So this is uh, what Microsoft suggests. Um, mm -hmm. Three-way mirror is easily explained. We have a copy, three copies of every extent the data and uh, it's put in three default domains so mm -hmm. if one if two drives fail we still have our data right mm -hmm. what would would the drop down box change if i would say have like six or eight servers no. uh, in a cluster no but if you have two servers it changes you know that right there's yeah. a two-way mirror there's a four-way or a nested uh, two-way mirror and mm -hmm. there is a, a mirror accelerated nested mirror accelerated parity yeah mm -hmm. but uh from th if you have three servers we would only have the three-way mirror right but the microsoft what about... will only offer the three-way mirror right um in windows admin center with powershell you can do what you want yeah okay so you say you what about the dual parity option uh, when would that show up or how would i create that if i would ever want to have dual parity only Which, with PowerShell. Okay. It's not recommended by Microsoft for virtual machines. And Azure Stack HCI, every workload is in a virtual machine. It's not like storage spaces direct, where we can also do a um, scale out file server. That's a use case with storage spaces direct in Windows Server. But Azure Stack HCI is only for virtual machines. And uh, double parity is not at least not strongly not recommended for virtual yeah. machines i even heard not supported but microsoft sometimes is very vague about support statements right so uh, yeah yeah you know that okay you can do you a know. double parity but uh bernard why shouldn't the customer uh, do uh, okay. uh, yeah, double then parity? maybe you present something about yeah that. let's 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 do it now so yeah. if you could switch over to my screen I, I so, did, so maybe you go to presentation <laughs> mode. <laughs> okay, here you go. Um, okay, so there is, you know, the what you said, the recommendation part, and I put the link at the at the bottom, which is the official website where you can look that up and find that that graph, which is which kind of resiliency level should I take for different kinds of workloads, right? And we are we live in that world, right? So we are the virtual machine guys. We want to host virtualized workloads, databases in virtual machines or something like that. We want to have this here, right? So the biggest right performance, for example, mm -hmm. or the biggest performance in general, right? If you go for dual parity, which would that option be here, right? So you know the thing is that you get more network capacity out of your storage that you put into the servers. However, it comes with a cost. The cost is this here. Um, so this doesn't seem too bad, right? So the indication people might see, okay, if I get a little bit less performance, it might be okay-ish for me. However, the biggest impact is on rights, okay? And I'll just show you from a personal experience um, how big the impact is right so take for example this which was a really decent system a lot of servers 
um, and we just added, you know, the VM fleet with a 25% write portion, right? So 75 was still read, right? And I can guarantee that the read performance is cool with dual parity, but the write performance really is is impacting the servers quite a lot. Do we have the numbers for 100% uh, right? This is already the uh, no, unfortunately, one, right? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately not. not. So you know, yeah. even with that calculation here, which is nobody wants to wait 70 milliseconds for a write operation or for the I/O, uh, right? But I remember I have 75% read, which I can yeah. guarantee that the, the the latency is you know maybe in below the, um, a millisecond. Yes, I, I would assume. Yes. Yeah. So uh, you know, you can calculate now up how much the right latency is right so that's over, the only over 250 milliseconds just okay. by by putting yeah. it there yeah and to compare this with uh, the three way mirroring right so um it was um to be honest it was not on the same system but it was on the almost identical system right um same same uh same load pattern right um doing that with three way mirroring you could see here um Latency is sort of okayish, right? Two milliseconds or max, but you know they are sort of acceptable. Yeah, um, that's, still, that's still average. That's I've I've seen much better yeah. systems, but uh, yeah. it's it's quite a difference. One point eight, let's say it's the yeah. right is maybe three three ish uh, milliseconds. Yeah. Uh, that's not great, but it's much 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 yeah, so, better than the double parity. Yeah. So if you compare it, it was almost factor ten, right? So yeah. you had four hundred k iops with horrible latency and now you have four million iops with decent latency right yeah. so it's it's really a huge impact so that's something that you should know because you know if you um if you uh, buy your system based on a dual parity capacity uh assumption uh not good if you if you're running virtual machines or databases on it, right? Mm -hmm. So be aware. So we have an we have another release resiliency that is mm -hmm. supported in uh, okay. in uh, yeah. storage spaces uh, in an Azure Stack HCI. That's a mirror accelerated parity, mm -hmm. and in my experience, it's as long as we write in the mirror part of the mm -hmm. volume, it's as fast as or nearly as fast as a three-way mirror of <laughs> course if the system has to do the double parity magic with colder data that's a good thing so we have a kind of uh, real-time tiering between the three-way <laughs> mirror and double parity part in the same volume um, there we get a little bit of an impact so if you if you size it well for your workload it's in my opinion, in my experience, mm -hmm. nearly as good as a three-way mirror for the mm -hmm. part, uh, for the really right part. And often you have data that is not touched a lot. Yeah. So uh, if mm -hmm. you look at a file server, we have a file server with data for nearly 10 years in there, and I never use those files again. They are just there for yeah. archive. Or if you look at a SharePoint server for documents, same. Yeah, there's yeah. maybe an Excel um, Excel sheet in there, spreadsheet that you use every three months or so. So this is really cold data, right? Yeah, I mean, if you really know how your workload is behaving, right? If it's a hundred percent read, right? Um, then I would say other alternative uh, types are good, right? I mean, you could even use dual parity, but who is you know who knows exactly how the uh, the the load pattern is right um, i mean as you said i mean archival backup data virtualized i mean you do have the the grouping of the workload types there however yeah. if you're uncertain i think um mirroring is you know the low brainer it is maybe the most costly one but um the medium one is the mirror accelerated parity which you said how uh, but um, from your experience, what is what would the, be the portion of you know mirror uh, mirror versus dual parity um, in a mirror accelerated parity uh, volume? Yeah, would yeah you do well, 50 50 I, or um, no 50 50 is most of the time I think too much. If you look mm. at the really the the data that you change 
very mm -hmm. often it's not 50 percent of your workload uh, usually imagine mm -hmm. a 10 terabyte volume so let's switch back to my screen and mm -hmm. uh, get our faces in there again hello back so i already took the liberty to create two volumes because it takes a little bit of time and mm -hmm. uh, now let me explain it at the third one so just have to take the yeah, name of the host. while you are while you are typing i i think uh, maybe carson we should uh, we should do a sizing session as an optional uh, piece at some we point do in that. time yeah, yeah. we do that yeah so if i choose mirror accelerated parity windows admin center offers three mm -hmm percentages of mirror it's 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent and i'm i use most of the time the 30 percent mirror option mm -hmm. and we will we will talk about that what what that means how how the difference is between a three-way mirror and a double uh, a mirror accelerated parity with 30 percent it's not too bad so if you mm -hmm. if you look at a 10 terabyte volume and you created all three mirror. We have 30 terabytes of our of our uh, pool extends are gone. If we do uh, uh, a double parity with uh, 10 terabytes, so hold double parity. We don't should we shouldn't do that. But again, mm -hmm. 20 terabytes are gone, and the mirror accelerated parity part is between those 20 and 30 terabytes. So if we go with 30 percent, we have 23 terabyte extends gone. Yeah. So it's we, we have a saving of seven terabytes over the all dub, uh, all three-way mirror part, um, mm -hmm. seven terabytes, um, and only three terabytes more if we go all double parity. And the performance is really a difference. So mm -hmm. I would do I would go with the 70-30 part. Yeah, mm -hmm. that should be safe, um, and you don't lose too much extent. But in mm -hmm. our example here, we go with a three-way mirror. Uh, is you are from Microsoft, so we have to do the Microsoft recommended <laughs> way, right? <laughs> so um, what is here about uh, under more options? So we talked about, we have two provisioning types, uh, starting with Azure Stack HCI 21H2. Microsoft introduced the SYN provisioning. Before that, it was always fixed. Fixed mean if I create a one terabyte volume, um, it will, with a three-way mirror, it will take out three terabyte of extents of my uh, storage pool. Mm -hmm. If we go with SYN and would create a, a one terabyte volume, it will only take out the extent that it has now that are only some extents for the metadata. Because mm -hmm. there is not data in there, it's zero data. We don't have VMs in there yet. It will, it will not consume a lot of our um, storage pool. But when we put VMs in there, it will mm -hmm. extend. Yeah, so with thin, uh, you are a bit uh, more variable how 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 much is taken. Um, and but I'm still going with fixed most of the time because I want to see what's what's used. And if we put data in a thin volume, it has to uh, allocate new extends and change the metadata of the storage pool shouldn't be shouldn't be something that is too hard but uh, at least it does it then we can do integrity checksums um mm -hmm. you, you you didn't see anything about refs and ntfs windows admin center always uses refs and refs is really the way to go with storage basis direct and azure stack hci the refs uh, file system has really some advantages and if you want to do a mirror accelerated parity that's only possible with um refs yeah so mm -hmm. uh, refs has another kind of option it's the integrity checksums they are done for the metadata of the refs system anyway but you can decide if i want to use it for my for my VMs also. What does it do? It creates additional checksums in the ReFS file system. And mm -hmm. there is a task that periodically goes over the data and compares the data that is in the extents with the checksums. And if mm -hmm. there is a disk 
uh, a mismatch, it can most of the time auto correct it. So this is mm -hmm. not for wrong. Uh, if the drive fail, it is if you have some kind of change of the data through bit rot or cosmic mm -hmm. um, Cosmo, radiation uh, cosmo, radiation right yeah. I, I haven't had that but there are <laughs> companies that have well, that so i do, usually i don't use it but there is the option to get some more security for your data mm. and then this part is for some companies very essential if they mm. want to encrypt their data on rest uh, on the csv volumes with bitlocker that's mm -hmm. possible and it's it's not stores the bitlocker uh, decryption keys in the active directory on the cluster object in the cluster database and you get even uh, of course you get a, a a key where you can unlock your volumes if your ad is gone also we don't mm -hmm. do that here but i at least wanted to talk about uh, the uh, option so and then mm -hmm. i always get asked what's the impact with mm -hmm. integrity checksums i don't know it's mm -hmm. only when you write data, they are calculated. So there has to be some kind of impact, but I don't mm -hmm. think it's 50%, it's much less. Mm -hmm. With encryption, I had this last week, I had uh, just a customer where encryption is mandatory and we did mm -hmm. a VM fleet on okay. a volume that was not encrypted and the VM fleet with encryption and it's, 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 not, it's not hard, it's not much. It's really, mm -hmm. really slight because the encryption is done in the, in the hardware in the processor. So let's create this volume. Let's create one more and then we are done with this video mm -hmm. and we have our layout for yeah, so the M3. That's what I heard as well, right? So that the impact was bad a little bit more in the past. Um, but it is uh, it is improving or it was improved recently. Yeah, um, I will share the numbers when we are looking at VM fleet on this system, mm -hmm. and then I, yeah. I will tell you the numbers what we got with uh, BitLocker volumes on. It was a six okay. node all NVMe okay. cluster. Yeah, so for, for you to follow, I mean, Carsten is creating a volume that is. Um, that is uh, named as every node. So for each node has a volume uh, with the same name. And the idea is later to put on a set of virtual machines that run our load tests in order to get some performance testing out of it. Mm -hmm. That's why Carson does it that way. And um, um, Look here, I yeah. can even show something else because mm -hmm. this volume is already 40% fill, filled up because mm -hmm. I didn't change from gigabyte to terabyte. <laughs> so let's change that. You see here, it's it's too, yeah. it's roughly the size is two gigabyte. That's too small. Mm -hmm. So uh, we go into the volume. We have a lot of information here. I love these graphs here and we will look mm -hmm. at that when we do our performance tests. And now they move the extent to settings and you can here put one terabyte right. and extend the volume so mm -hmm. a fixed a, a mm -hmm. fixed created volume can be extended not shrinked mm -hmm. uh, a thin provisioned volume can't be extended and, shrink, and shrinked so you usually go faster with a thin it's, it's only using the space for the data that's in there, mm. but you can't extend it, at least not with Windows Admin Center, and yeah. I never tried with uh, something else. So I now think we have there is a power, PowerShell way of doing that, but it's uh, more complicated to do so. But yeah, yeah. So let's have a look at the drives. Finally, mm -hmm. we see here our green um, part mm -hmm. of the of the um, uh, storage space. Bar. <laughs> the, pool, the, yeah. the green bar yeah is is extended now but we have have still a lot of space to the end mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. available are 22.8 terabytes of extents and if mm -hmm. we would go with a three-way mirror we have to divide this number by three mm -hmm. and we would use all of it and if we want not to use this area the reserved part uh I think it's 22.8 minus 5.8. So mm -hmm. uh, still 17 or something like that. 17 terabyte we could use divided by three. That should be five terabyte. Yeah. Question. So as we might have people listening that are new to HCI or to Windows failover clustering and storage spaces direct, what would why would you create multiple 
volumes, right? Oh, um, that's a good or question. Or not just have one big volume, right? So why would you have more? Yeah, or what you, would be your recommendation on this one? Yeah, you can do one big volume, yeah, but don't go over 64 terabytes because 64 terabytes is the maximum uh, um, um, amount that is supported in one CSV in a storage basis direct scenario. And that is, uh, there are some historical reasons. ReFS can do much, much, much larger volumes, but in, in storage basis direct, 64 terabyte is your maximum number. Mm -hmm. um, I like to have at least one volume per server. And in storage basis direct with virtual machines on it, so the hyperconverged scenario, it's, it's, the reason is not uh, as important as if you would do Windows Server Storage Basis Direct with, with a converged scenario. So meaning a file server on it for virtual machines or SQL or a user profile. This is also a use case that you can do with a Storage Basis Direct uh, scale out file server. If you would have one volume there, every I.O. is only done over the host that is owner of the volume. Because we have a feature in SMB uh, 3.02 that's called um, shortest path algorithm. So the the external um, user of the of the data in these uh, scale out file servers it finds the shortest path to the volume, and the volume is at the owner. So every external resource will only um, contact the owner and ask him for data. But we have some more servers there that they, they have also external network cards that can be used for external traffic. And when you have only one volume, there could can be only one server, the owner of this volume where all your data is. So that's not a good design. Um, so in a scale out file server, you should have at least one volume per server, and then your incoming and outgoing data is really cr uh, spread over the whole cluster. In Azure Stack HCI, this reason is not so important anymore because we don't have external usage of the data. We don't have um, SMB um, shortest pass algorithm because all the data is in the cluster, but I still do that. And it's still, uh, I think, a recommendation also by Microsoft, one volume, or multiple volumes per, cl per cluster node. Okay, so long, long answer to your short question. And I think we are. <laughs> this is also a very long video, so we should go on to the next one. And I'm very excited about benchmarking. Right? See you. <laughs>